What rules, you sons of bitches? Okay, um, somebody sent this. I guess uh, Noah did a video about this person. I don't know who they are. Patience Xena. Why does TikTok hate this man so much and the man she's referring to is Jordan Peterson? So we're going to watch this. <laughs> Welcome back to another video. Thank you for uh, Of course, she's British. <laughs> that explains everything immediately. <laughs> Today's topic is Jordan Peterson. I think I've said this to you before on a previous video. I discovered Jordan Peterson through TikTok. I saw loads. This a conservative? She's pretty. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Are you British phobic slash J? I mean, it might be a little bit. Maybe a little. Saying how he was a misogynist and how he was a racist and how he was every ism phobic, insert it here, that is what people were saying he was. Now, at this time, this was when I was regularly watching the Joe Rogan podcast. And <laughs> <laughs> Trying to approach this with good faith here. And I made the connection that the same people who hated Joe Rogan also hated Jordan hey, Peterson. Fun fact, my dad hates you. Oh, cool. I need to find a way to make it obnoxiously obvious to him that I agree with you and like your content to make him as upset as possible slash HJ. Um, I don't know. Have a conversation with him about cops. Uh, tell him that 40% uh, of cops actually don't uh, have their badge kissed and hugged by a civilian every day. Google 40% cops to find out more. And the way that they were representing Joe Rogan, I didn't think was accurate based on the countless episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience podcast that I'd watched. So I was curious to know if the way that they were representing Jordan Peterson was also inaccurate, if they were wrong about how they were representing Joe Rogan. So this person's like, I read the manga, you only watch the anime, I know everything about Joe Rogan, so I can excuse when he's bigoted and doesn't know everything on a topic, even though he admits that he's a stupid guy and doesn't know everything about a topic. Topics. Until he starts talking about trans people, then he knows everything. That he's that he's like an absolute authority, and he has a friend. He has a friend that knows a trans person that uh, hates being trans. He has a friend that knows a, a trans person that uses a litter box. He has a friend that does this, and it's like he's, it's all lies. It's all lies. She's simping. It's true. Lo and behold, I became a fan. I I became a fan of Jordan Peterson, which I don't think was the intention of those who hate him. I do wonder God. if that's like I, people get really fucking emotional when it comes to Jordan Peterson and Joe Rogan, and end up not making making very succinct arguments uh not that that's necessary i mean it's only necessary if you're a fucking debate lord most people are just normal most people are actually normal and you can just say like hey uh they claim to speak on things that they're like really not educated about and i don't think they're a reliable source to build a worldview off of um they're also both very you know jordan peterson specifically is very sp like clearly in it for money Hence why he does speaking tours and book tours and, you know, all this fucking shit. What did she say? <laughs> I don't speak British help. Uh, don't worry about it. Fish and chips. Have a tea and crumpet. Um, she makes British people look awful. <laughs> you can't say that. <laughs> She's not a representation of British people in the same way I'm no representation of Americans. She does! Tuesday. <laughs> hey, she's having a giggle. She's having a, she's having a crack. I know that's Australian, but still. All these people get on these social media platforms and talk about how horrible Jordan Peterson is and how how much of a monster he is. I don't even think Jordan Peterson's a monster. I think he's dumb. I think he's uh, really pretentious and self aggrandizing at every opportunity. I think uh, he has a sycophantic, uh, extremely defensive audience that uh, makes him out to be like far more than he is. And that feeds into like his sort of narcissistic ego. But at the end of the day, I think he's just stupid. I think he's just dumb, uninformed and like thinks he's way smarter than he actually is. If Jordan Peterson didn't play into the, into the rabid fan base that he developed by being transphobic, you know, he wouldn't be all that bad, but he does play into that. And that fan base is fucking genuinely dangerous. Everyone has a bit of Hitler in them. No way he he said that no fucking shot he said that first of all hitler and stalin were very singular types and there's a bit of hitler and stalin and everyone so <laughs> hitler and everyone really can there's you be give a couple of examples of the transphobia my dad doesn't believe me that jp is um here's the thing that's crazy not to believe that Jordan Peterson's transphobic. This interview with Jim Jeffries is pretty good. Uh, Jim Jeffries isn't like a leftist or anything, but he still fucking owned him just by like saying his own points out loud. There's so much. I mean, Jordan Peterson built his entire career 
on belittling trans people uh, for the sake of free speech. Initially, he built his career, I mean, this is, I think, a, an interview about it, um, lying about Canadian Bill C-16, saying that um, it's going to jail you if you misgender someone, when all it did was uh, include trans people in the list of protected categories uh, to qualify as a hate crime, which is more than reasonable. Is he not tired? Uh, like the mental loops are getting to be a lot? No, because all you need to do to be a conservative commentator is to just make an ins like just make a claim that is so ridiculous that only idiots take it seriously, and then do the fast part of rap god. And if you do it fast enough, it's like it's like DDR Guitar Hero. If you do it fast enough, then all the audience goes. <laughs> Let's watch the Jim Jeffries interview. Presence at your protest. Yeah, that's true. He like attracted Nazis and then just like was like, no, they're not Nazis. They're just they're just people with different ideas. Yeah, I don't like Nazis. I don't like them, but I I'm going to appeal to them in every every possible way. Two years ago, he was an unknown psychology professor at the University of Toronto, but today he's been called the most influential public intellectual in the Western world. That's fucking insane. Whoever wrote this New York Times article genuinely should be in prison. He's pulling a Kanye in slow motion. I mean, basically, it's the same. That's my point, though. That's my point is that everything Kanye is doing is what conservatives already do. He's just like taking that extra step towards the reality of what they all advocate for and doing it publicly and they don't like that it started when canada proposed a new transgender rights law i sat down this is a great this is actually a really great uh introduction into into jordan peterson to a pit, then. i've opposed a bill in canada that made use of people's preferred pronouns mandatory by law which is not true i said earlier he lied about canadian bill c16 because that is not what the law says that's not at all what it says but that's what he said over and over and over again no that's not acceptable. Why do you care Which, what they call Yeah, exactly. Why does it fucking matter? It doesn't. Kanye is speedrunning anti-Semitism. He's speedrunning conservatism, and he's already gotten to the end. Like, the only step further for Kanye is to literally start firebombing synagogues. That's the only thing he can do to be more conservative at this point. ...about free speech, but students didn't buy it. So they protested his classes, called him a Nazi, and labeled him transphobic. Yeah, and I mean, you know, the Nazis classically were very into trans people. It's well known that the Nazis were, were they really, you know, burned through a lot of uh, trans literature because they were reading it so fast and so hard. They really, they really concentrated all the, all the trans people into, into camps for fun. Again, it looks like a duck. It quacks like a duck. That duck's a fucking Nazi because he does all the things that Nazis do. The, the irony is Jordan hates this. Part of Jordan Peterson, Charlie Kirk, Milo Yiannopoulos, Nick Fuentes, part of uh, their initial rise to uh, prominence on the internet was to say that, you know, oh, they're censoring me on college campuses. Brother, that's just free speech. This is true freedom of speech. The, the freedom to speak truth to power of all of these fucking nobody students coming up to this fucking charlatan who's come to fucking convert and to fester primitive ideology in a place of learning and understanding to foster hate in a place where so many where so many students have nowhere else to go. That's fucking free speech. He's just outnumbered and it makes him sad. So Peterson started posting YouTube videos railing against political correctness. Yeah, and his... uh. His lectures are are just batshit. It's like we've I've made several videos with Jordan and you know on my own about his lectures are just fucking insane. This dude was addicted to benzos and it, it's fucking obvious in the way he speaks. It's absolutely pathetic. And conservatives ate that shit up. One and a half million hits later, this has become a huge issue. Jordan Peterson, it's hard to express my gratitude. I hate Tucker Carlson. Like, the things I want to say about Tucker Carlson would get me banned on more platforms than Alex Jones. I, I just want to say that now. I have to hold my tongue every time Tucker Carlson comes into the, into the conversation because legitimately, I would be canceled for, <laughs> for how much I hate this motherfucker. By, not by the left, not by normal people, but by fucking right-wingers who actually do cancel culture and do it effectively. Do you think that hate speech should be free speech as well? Yes. Okay. Crazy. Uh, because the, the issue is who defines hate speech? The marginal, the victims of it, probably. And like the people who recognize that they're marginalized. Like that, that's a crazy thing to say. Who, who's, defi who's to define that the N-word is bad? To some people, it's not very bad. Think about it. <laughs> Looks to me like Peterson and the alt-right aren't fucking. 
but he has a Von Flute. That's interesting. Hmm. Couple of things going on here to think about. And he also seems to enjoy being a bit provocative. I don't really think of it as delivering a lecture to an audience. The Ugh. closest thing oh my God. Really that it can This suit is fucking hideous. This is disgusting. Compares to is probably stand up comedy. And something I really admire about comedians too is that they'll they'll take that risk. College students, the postmodern types, they're so ungrateful. You can't force me to respect you, it's just not possible. I am not going to be a mouthpiece for language that I detest. Like, it hurts your feelings, so you don't want to use pronouns. I, I'm translating what you're saying from fucking dumbass fake intellectual speak into real human speak. It hurts his feelings, so he doesn't want to use pronouns, because it makes him feel confused. It's like stand-up, but instead of laughs, it creates liberal outrage. Especially on college campuses. We quite successfully shut down their panel event. Meet Christine Elizabeth. She's led a series of protests against Peterson. And the goal isn't just to voice an opinion, it's to censor Peterson completely. Extremely based. Brother is transphobic, but in the way that the phobic actually means he gets scared. Yeah, yeah, that's a great way to put it. They use air horns. <laughs> they set up PA systems with white noise. But also They're connecting to the fucking Bluetooth speaker, I think. Pussy. Debate them, Jordan. Debate their ideas. Come on. Are you 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 just like shut down? Come on. Noise have to be white. Don't you feel it like even when he laughs at jokes. <laughs> Don't you feel it like shutting down a panel like that, even if the things that are being said are horrendous is stifling free speech in any way? Yes. Of course it's stifling free speech, but free speech isn't automatically a positive thing. And that's like, it's like controversial to say that in America, but it's like, bro, if free speech includes Hitler, then he will use his speech to suppress more marginalized speech. Freedom of speech in the way that we understand it in America means freedom of speech for the powerful. Freedom of speech for those who are immune to the marginalization that comes with being POC, that comes with being a woman, that comes with being trans or queer in America. Like, Jordan Peterson has a platform because he's a fucking boring white man. And people take him seriously more so than any other demographic. He's Canadian, do they even have free speech? No, that's the funniest point. And neither does Australia. <laughs> America fucking brain rot has completely infested the world. No, I'm exercising my right to use free speech to criticize them. Exactly. Why don't you free speech? Why doesn't Jordan free speech their free speech away? Peterson doesn't like being told what to do, so I tried giving a different example to see if he can bend. Yeah, he doesn't like being told what to do. Like a seven-year-old, like a baby. Making people bake a cake for a gay wedding. Making them do it? Yeah. I don't think that's a very good idea. But here's the argument. So should they be able to deny making a cake for a black couple if they don't like black people? Allowed to? Probably. That doesn't mean it's right. Okay, so then we had the civil rights movement yeah. where they said... Like, he just single hand, like, with one question, made Jordan Peterson anti-civil rights. With one question made him anti- put him on the position of being anti-civil rights. That's how little this man thinks before he opens his mouth. Black people, you had to serve them in your restaurants and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, true, he's not being censored. He's being told to go somewhere the fuck else. True. It did work and it did make our society better, but would yeah. you argue that that still wasn't right? No, that was right. Why Why is that different to now if you didn't want to make a cake for black, black people? Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not different. Maybe Dude, they fucking covered it in so much shit when that's like the biggest part of the video. That should be the mo- that- this clip should be fucking everywhere, but this video has 177,000 views. An honest man will admit when he's wrong. Bro, he fucking admitted it. he's wrong in the same way a fucking, like, first grader gets caught in a lie. He caught him in a contradiction of his worldview, and then his worldview didn't fucking change after that. How is that cowardly? That was genius. This is the best. The best and shortest video to describe to you who Jordan Peterson is and what he stands for. And if you're convinced that this is some intellectual titan, that this is some honest man, then you're a fucking idiot. Dick eating goes crazy. Uh, like that it's impressively clever that he was able to back him into a corner with just two questions. Yeah, it's not even because Jim Jeffries is all that clever. It's because Jordan Peterson's worldview is that fragile and that obvious because he's that stupid. <sighs> all right, I'm over it. So that's Jordan Peterson. And now we're going to watch this video 
where this British girl is talking about how much she likes Jordan Peterson. And then I'm probably going to leave a really mean comment. <laughs> Not really. Not mean. Informative. The oblivious souls out here who don't know who he is, we're like, God damn, this guy sounds like a sounds like a monster who no. is he and so we go and find out more about him and then we become fans so i do wonder how many of jordan peterson's fans have come from a result of his haters promoting him because now that i actually know more about jordan peterson i have a bit more context into what they're talking about so so i've literally just gone on tiktok and typed i hate jordan peterson uh, and then we're just going to respond to whatever the hell comes up i just want to say i really hate jordan peterson like I really hate Jordan Peterson. I think we came up with a title for this video, fellas. I think we have a title for this video now. A lot. I just... Wow. Um... What a succinct argument. Yeah, it's every... Really... Oh my god, dude. Yeah, it's interesting that you can't see the likes on this. I wonder if it had that many likes. You know what? It would probably had three. That probably had three likes. What do you want every fucking person on TikTok to be like, why I don't like Jordan Peterson? Here's 58 minutes detailing every point he's ever made. The fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> this is what Ben Shapiro does. Literally what Ben Shapiro does. So I'm sick and been on TikTok all day. And I genuinely forgot that there are people on this earth that love jordan peterson and want like think he's a prophecy and i want to puke bro why what the fuck is this you're not making any points this is pathetic mm -hmm. i actually quite like her hair color it's such a shame that vibrant cool hair colors are now associated with uh insanity but bro get over yourself this is a really interesting interesting example of a femme person trapped in the right wing pipeline she could be doing it for fucking clout but she it's not working but i actually really think her hair color is really cool like this is a lib take this is an absolute lib take that like color hair means insanity because all you care about are aesthetics you don't care about anything other than aesthetics it's why you looked up i hate jordan peterson on your computer but aside from that i have no issue with the fact that she dislikes the fact that people like Jordan Peterson. I have no issue with the fact that it makes her, as Americans say, want to puke. I just want to know why, though. I would like to understand- Why does every person who has an opinion need to justify it to you? Like, what an entitled point of view. Why is she purposely being ignorant? I don't know if she's doing it on purpose. She could just be misinformed. I'm gonna clown on her because she's a YouTuber, but if she was like a normal person with these takes, and a lot of normal people do have these takes, I would be very charitable in a conversation. But I'm not being charitable because she's being fucking dishonest and being like, oh, you made a TikTok saying you don't like Jordan Peterson? Where's your, where's your, where's your evidence? Like, shut up. A, sometimes people just don't like things. And she picked people with like, one person had a nose ring, another person had colored hair. You're like, you're looking for leftists. You're looking for your typical SJWs so you, that you could see them get upset and then be like, the left doesn't have any points. Here I am, asshole. Here I am. I'm the left. I just, I'm gonna make a fucking sick, this is gonna be like a six hour video about Jordan Peterson. Why you hate him so much, aside from just the fact that you hate him because you hate him? I think that Jordan Peterson thinks that he's trying to help young men. I'm not actually totally certain of that, but I, I think he does. I agree. I think that's the thing, right? Is that like, I think Jordan Peterson's very aware that what he does makes him a lot of money, but I think he's informed by the fact that he's just kind of stupid. Like Ben Shapiro, he's a shark. Like he knows what he's doing. 100%. He also shares those beliefs, but he was never tricked into them. Jordan Peterson kind of fell into like the super misogynistic alpha male kind of circle culture and he just kind of accepted it and ran with the bag, right? But that's, I think, what kind of differentiates him. And then every so often he'll pop off about like climate change not being real and you're like, oh, what? <laughs> and that like that shit is like the shit that he's getting paid for, you know, like very obviously. But the way that he does it, it should be obvious. It is obvious to nearly everyone else that what he's doing is completely unhelpful. He recruits vulnerable, insecure young men. He feeds all of their feelings of frustration and anger and then turns them loose on people that had nothing to do with the problems that they're experiencing. True. By telling them to clean their room. Yeah, that's all he's ever said. What the hell? That's all he's ever said. Yep. And to, and to pet cat. Yeah. Those are the all the only things he that said. That's really setting them loose on, <laughs> on society. We don't know what the rules are. Like what here's a rule. How about He's talking about sexual harassment. No makeup in the workplace. 
Why would that be a rule? Why should you wear makeup in the workplace? Uh, Isn't that sexually provocative? No. It's not? No. Well, what is it then? Makeup is sexually provocative, inherently. What's the purpose of makeup? Some people would like to just put on makeup. To, why? <laughs> to, 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 I don't know why. Why do you make your lips red? Because they turn red during sexual arousal. Yep. That's why people wear lipstick. So, um, I need you to think about this. Uh, what the fuck was your name? Zena. Zena, I need you to think about this, okay? If that's not misogynistic, then what is it? Correct. Are you wearing makeup for sexual arousal right now? I wouldn't say you were. I would say you're wearing makeup because you like it. Or because you like the way you look with it on. Because I believe that women are autonomous people with feelings and motivations that have nothing to do with having sex with me. Unlike Jordan Peterson. Why do you put rouge on your cheeks? Same reason. So your argument. I'm not saying that you shouldn't wear makeup. No, no, I'm not saying that. But No, I'm saying you should look sexy for daddy. <laughs> when women put on makeup in the workplace, yeah. when they make their lips red, when they sort of put on rouge, yeah. right? That when they enter that work. Also, yeah, like rouge, like the most common kind of make. Yeah, like you always see people in the office with rouge. Such a weird fucking take. That, like clearly men who know nothing about makeup. That there is sort of a complicitness with, with which the woman has said, I am going to sexualize myself in the workplace and therefore whatever comes will come. No, I didn't say the last part of that. So I didn't what, say what so what it, But he, he just implied it is the thing. Whatever comes will come. But, but I think the issue of complicitness, how about high heels? So he doesn't, here's the thing, and if Zena's watching this, I want her to pay attention to this. Here's the thing, he's pressing him on what he said, he's asking him to elaborate on something, on an insane claim that he made, and he said, well, let's not talk about that, what about high heels? Let's move, let's, let me say more weird things until you just give up. How about high heels? What are they what for? What about high heels? What about them? Like, he has nothing to say about his claim. He just wants to make these weird claims. There to exaggerate sexual attractiveness. That's what high heels do. Women who don't wear makeup, statistically, don't get the raises and promotions that women who do wear makeup get. Do you guys know that? That's a real statistic. They tilt your, they tilt your pelvis forward so your hips stick out. Oh, they tilt your pelvis forward so your hips stick out, and that makes you, that makes men go awooga. Yeah, that's why people wear high heels, guys. Woman understander Jordan Peterson. I'm losing my mind. <sighs> I know. Uh, because I think Xena's gonna watch this video and probably respond to it for clout, I really, um, I wanted to, to back up my, my, uh, my, my claim here. I used photo feeler to run a, uh, an, ex an experiment. Photo feeler is a website where you can upload a picture to get unbiased feedback from people. So this isn't even a real fucking study, but it's still indicative of attitudes in America. More likable and influential with makeup on, but what's interesting is slightly less competent with makeup on which is hilarious. That's like straight misogyny. Like, I'm sure I can find an actual fucking study. Let me see. Recent studies from Harvard University, Massachusetts General Hospital, and PNG Beauty, how varying styles of makeup can affect perception. It plays into the power of adornment, which is a fucking really nerd way to put that. All makeup looks got a slight bump in higher ability with, compared with no makeup, except for the sexy look, which I guess is the one on the far right. Anyway, regardless, there's studies on this. That prove my point. That's what they do. And they tighten up your calf muscles. They're mm -hmm. a sexual display. Now High heels are a sexual display. That is a quote. That is a quote from Jordan Peterson. High heels are a sexual display. Yeah, and it's fucking... This is only a little cringe because it sounds. It looks like fucking genuine fan art. Did she rouge? No, I'm not saying that people shouldn't use sexual displays in the workplace. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that that is what they're doing. And like... This appeals to insecure young men who don't understand sex, and now they think sex is all over them, and that's weird and bad for the world. So what is the relevance then to, like, sexual harassment in the workplace? Yeah, and if he's saying it's fine to do in the workplace, then who cares? Why are you bringing it up? Ugh. If you can't make... Well, the Maoists put everybody in uniforms to stop that sort of thing from happening. Men wear uniforms. That's the way they wear suits. I, I guess I, I'm not... Women wear suits too. This guy is so dumb. Seeing the sort of coherence of the, of the thought that you're putting together then because... What are the rules that govern sexual interactions between men and women in the workplace? Don't! That's a pretty good rule. 
What are the rules that govern sexual interactions between men and women in the workplace? Why would you need to ask this question if you were a normal person? The answer is, we don't know. No, Jordan doesn't know. Because he's fucking brain dead. That almost every big media organization has specifically rewritten their policies in the past few months to, uh, with very concrete examples of things that are not okay. I mean, like... He's got his fucking footsies out, man. He's talking about how women wearing makeup is fucking sexual and he's got his goddamn toesies out. He's got his dogs out. I mean, like, do you not think that those are concrete? Pathetic. Well, maybe. It's possible. I don't know the policies well enough to be certain. Um, my sense... And again, you press him to elaborate on what he means and he's like, well, I don't know enough. I'm just gonna claim shit. It's generally is that, like... What would you say it? Outraged mob activism generally doesn't translate very well into intelligent policy. No, no it does. All Canadian professors dress like this. I just want to put this picture on the screen. I'm just going to have this picture on the screen while he says this. Um, my sense generally is that, like, what would you say it? Outraged mob activism generally doesn't translate very well into intelligent policy. Man, that's crazy, man. Mob activism doesn't usually... Doesn't usually... What's that, bud? Sorry, what are you... Huh? What's up? What? Huh? It's all about the individual, guys. Remember, you're the main character. Collectivism doesn't work. And they say leftists don't live in reality. Like, the first pictures I pulled up were union strikes, which were nowhere near the size of the Million Man March. The fucking suffragette movement, the civil rights movement, like... <laughs> Yeah, mob mentality. It doesn't translate into into policy. Yeah, man. Totally. March on Washington. Look at this shit, dude. But it's all individualism. Like, like to be a conservative, you have to ignore all of American history. You have to. Or your worldview doesn't make sense. You have to pretend to be stupid or be actually stupid. He encourages misogynist thinking. He says things like... Yeah, like the video we just watched. Like... Men can't have authentic debates with women due to the fact that they are unable to threaten women with physical violence. It's just not socially permitted. Any I could see him having that take, but it's probably a misquote. Or at least that's what she'll say. He encourages men to think and say these things. And then they all throw their hands up and wonder why they can't find women that want to date them. I'm highly suspicious of his claim that Jordan Peterson has said that men can't debate us because they can't beat us up. So I'm gonna try and see if I can find anything that resembles what he just said to try and see if like, yeah, I need to, un I need to understand where that came from. <laughs> so, BRB. Ugh, fucking didn't even center the text. Oh, he also says the, the, the pay gap between men and women is a fact of life and you can't do anything about it. Cool. I want to see if she finds the same video I do, because I don't know if this is where the quote is from either. I know how to stand up <sighs> okay, that's to the same clip. who's unfairly trespassing against me. And the reason I know that is because the parameters for my resistance are quite well defined, which what? is we talk, we argue, we push, and then it becomes physical. Huh? Right? Like, if, if we move beyond the boundaries of civil discourse, we know what the next step is. Okay, that's forbidden in, in discourse with women. He said trespassing. Who's unfairly trespassing against me. And trespassing against me. Like, what is the... Th because Jordan Peterson, like, just runs like a fucking steamroller and you can't stop him. He talks like, you know, Ben Shapiro, where you can't stop him in the middle of a sentence and understand what he's talking about. I don't know what we're talking about. Are we talking about an argument? Or are you talking about when someone's, like, in your house? Trespass king against me. Like, I'm, I'm genuinely, like, so confused of, of what we're talking about. The parameters for my resistance are quite well defined. Your resistance of what is my point? Your resistance of what? A debate? A trespasser? We argue... We push, and then it becomes physical. Like, what are the, what, why does no one ask him what he's talking about? I feel stupid because I don't know what the situation is that he's trying to describe. Okay, that's forbidden in, in discourse with women. Why would you say that Jordan Peterson exists in a space where they constantly talk about how the left has no arguments? They, that's why punching Nazis is bad because you just want to, you want to debate them. But Jordan Peterson immediately jumps to this fucking insane fantasy in his head where he's like, if I'm arguing with
somebody and we start pushing, then we fight. Bro, what do you mean? Who are you fighting? Who's doing this to you? And so I don't think that men can control crazy women. I don't think, I really don't believe it. I think that like that is something your grandpa says and you go, grandpa, you can't say that anymore. That they have to throw their hands up. There's no step forward that you can take under those circumstances. This is a crazy fucking thing to say. Because if the man is offensive enough and crazy enough, the, the re reaction becomes physical right away, or at least the threat is there. Um, actually, fun, fun fact, 40% uh, of cops, 40% of cops actually stop. Uh, these kinds of fights between men and women. Google 40% cops to find out more. All right, I'm doing a bit, but like, for those of you who don't know, 40% of cops have uh, at least one charge or have been accused of domestic abuse, of physical domestic abuse, at least 40%. The number is probably much higher. So him implying that men and women, that men never physically fight women because you're not allowed to is just completely batshit crazy yeah and the other 60 haven't been caught that's a great fucking that's great and when men are talking to each other in any serious manner that underlying threat of physicality is always there no it's not that's crazy every man he talks to this man is delusionally paranoid for example there's a there's a woman in, in toronto who's been uh Why is he moving like this? that movement let's what are you say, looking at me and some other people who are going to do a free speech um, um event and she managed to organize quite effectively and she's quite <laughs> damn <laughs> using free speech to counter my free speech yeah that wouldn't be a thing if you weren't like bigoted you know oh, oh he has a notepad he's <laughs> he's doing the little like scrawls we have to like scribble on the notepad in mortuary assistant but it's just like a fucking <laughs> like he's he's gone i'd say she compared us to nazis for example which you know publicly <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna die using the swastika which wasn't really something i was all that fond of yeah you're actually you're only a nazi if you have a swastika or say you hate jews which a lot of Jordan Peterson's fans do that. And, you know, he'll take pictures with them with a Kekistan flag, um, which was based on off of a Nazi flag um, and is used by Nazis on 4chan. But they're just but they're just friends. They don't they don't agree on everything. They're just friends. I, I'm defenseless against that kind of female insanity because the techniques that I would use against a man who was employing those tactics are forbidden to me. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Like, it seems to me that it isn't. So he's saying a woman organized a counter protest to his fucking weird free speech event. And he wants to beat the shit out of her, but can't. That's what this clip is. That's who Jordan Peterson is. Men that have to stand up and say enough of this, even though that is what they should do. It seems to me that it's sane women who have to stand up against their crazy sisters and say, look, enough of that, enough man-hating, enough pathology. Yeah, stop fighting me. Just let me let me say that fucking wearing heels in the workplace is a sexual act. God damn, dude. Bringing disgrace on us as a, as a gender. But the problem there, and, and then I'll stop my little tirade, is that most of the women I know who are sane are busy doing sane things, right? Now the way Yeah, like their makeup and shopping, doing the dishes, things that women do. I took it is that Jordan Peterson is just simply acknowledging the reality, which is that the dynamic between two men is very different to the dynamic between a man and a woman. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Uh-huh. Yeah. He's saying the dynamic is different for him because he wants to fight women but can't. That's why he knows that there's a different dynamic because most people don't think about shit like this because most people are normal. Like the amount of charitability that you are offering Jordan Peterson is genuinely nauseating. Comes to confrontational situations or- Con Yeah, confrontation. He said trespassing against me. <laughs> when it comes to debates, when you have- Or trespassing against me. Two men. There is an unspoken understanding. This understanding. What are we cavemen? Wait, what do you what do you mean? <laughs> Two men talk can always lead to fight. What the fuck? What is wrong with you? Yeah, women aren't people to Jordan Peterson. He just wants to fight them. Thing that men have between each other is what helps them to keep their conversations more civil because they know that if they don't, there's going to be a consequence for that. No. No, when I talk to people, I'm not like, I'm staying civil because I can beat the shit out of you if I want to. That doesn't even make sense. If I'm having a conversation with Ben Shapiro, who's five foot two and 83 pounds, 
I'm not constantly thinking about, yeah, if this gets heated, I'll suplex this little fucker. No, I'm not thinking about that. It'd be funny, but I'm not thinking about it. Because I'd rather talk to him like a human being and not some fucking primitive caveman. Like, what, what the fuck is this Ooga Booga mentality? What Jordan Peterson is addressing is the reality that this dynamic does not exist between a man and a woman because we do live in a society that teaches kids that boys shouldn't hit girls rather than teaching them that people shouldn't hit people. No, they teach that people shouldn't hit people. When a boy hits another boy in elementary school, do you think they're like, cool, man? Yeah. Keep, keep doing that, actually. That's how you know it's My civil discourse. Yeah, women are also usually nicer to men because they're scared of violence. Your reality is misinformed. Like, the actual material reality, as, like, we understand it, counters your worldview. On average, 20 people per minute are physically abused by an intimate partner in the United States. During one year, this equates to more than 10 million women and men. One in four women, 25% experience severe intimate partner physical violence, intimate partner contact, uh, sexual violence, and or intimate partner stalking with impacts such as injury, fear, fear, fearfulness, PTSD, use of victim services, for services, contract, contraction of sexually transmitted diseases, etc. One in four women, one in three men, women, and one in four men have experienced some sort of physical violence by an intimate partner. This includes a range of behaviors. Now, this discrepancy might not mean that much, but that's 25% to 33%. That's still, when you're talking about the population of the entire country, or at least 10 million people, that's huge. There is way more women. One in seven women have been injured by an intimate partner. One in 25 men. So what is this? What is this conversation that we're having that men are scared to hit women in an argument? That's not true. No data supports that. One in four women, one in seven men have been victims of severe physical uh, violence, including beating, burning, and strangling. One in five women has been raped in their lifetime versus one in 71 men. That is an insane, unsurmountable discrepancy. And if Xena was watching this, she would say that's because men are stigmatized not to talk about it. I understand as a male presenting person who's been stigmatized into not talking about their experience in the past. But regardless, this number would not go down that much. I promise you. It would probably be 1 in 50 at the most. Okay? Yeah, but it's an even playing field. Men get raped too. Yeah, this is like exactly what they're doing. They're just misrepresenting reality. I believe women may be stigmatized not to, uh, to not talk about sexual assault, possibly, maybe, perhaps. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's something I didn't even remember to say. Women are extremely stigma stigmatized against uh, stigmatized against coming out against their abusers, especially when they're men in power, which they typically usually are, um, whether it's like their boss or a celebrity. Men are overwhelmingly the assailants, even if it's a male victim. True. That is also true. These fictional men in these fantasy scenarios where a man and a woman are arguing or debating and violence is not an option for the man, objectively not true for millions and millions of people. You might say that's still the minority, and I guess you're right, but it's like 20% chance that you'll get like assaulted by a man that you're talking to as a woman. Like that's insane. And most people would rather that be zero, but you're saying it is zero. So. so because a lot of women understand that there's a larger repercussion for a man being violent or I being aggressive. I hope you guys know that you're all awesome and remember to take care of yourselves. Being confrontational towards a woman and we don't really have as big of consequences for the reverse. I mean, we can see that being demonstrated with the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp situation. Oh right? my like, fucking God. Ugh. Last time I checked, she's still walking around free, considering the fact that she basically cut off his finger and was very abusive and very violent towards him during their- You know, it was his choice not to not to press charges, right? It was, it was a choice that he made. And you could say it was informed by, uh, by society, I guess. But also, yeah. That's a good stick book. I, I don't know if I can finish this. This is fucking horrific. Yeah, he's also still free. And he also abused her. So what's, what's up? Like the overwhelming majority of domestic abusers are still men. And we only know about those ones because they're high profile people. Now imagine the amount of times that these kind of situations happen in the real world to regular ordinary people who don't have the profile or the money to actually clear their name or clear their reputation. Sorry, are you saying the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial is reflective of how men are stigmatized and unable and marginalized into being unable to come out against their female abusers? Are you actually saying that? So I know that like feels really good for you to say, 
and it feels right, right? It makes your feelings feel good, okay? But we need to talk about facts. And in the words of the infamous Ben Shapiro, facts do not care about your feelings. Now, even if cases of male victim domestic abuse at the hands of women were underreported, let's say 50% of the actual amounts were un un unreported, it still would not catch up to how many women are victims of men. So the fact that you're saying that men don't have recourse when arguing with women is insane to me because A, no one thinks like that. No one's like, you know, if this goes sideways, I'm whipping out my fucking baseball bat and cracking this guy's skull and taking his fucking money. Like, that's GTA. That's a video game that you're living in right now. But secondly, even if that was the case, women are still victimized more than men. So your premise is fucking broken. So what Jordan Peterson is saying is that because we do have this double standard in terms of how we treat men who are aggressive or rude or violent towards women, it's very, very different towards how we treat women who behave like this towards men. Is it? I guess if you're an idiot, like Jordan Peterson is. I genuinely don't think that's true. And if you want to use the fucking Johnny, Hep Johnny Depp and her, and her herd trial as an example, that's a great example. They're both fucked in the head. Like, it is different. Women are far more scrutinized, actually, for being crazy, for being hysterical. Women are far more scrutinized and marginalized, especially in the public eye, and belittled when they come out against abusers. But men, thanks to people like you and Jordan Peterson, are usually applauded when they when they say a woman abused me or I was abused. If they're men with a uh, platform, they're usually applauded. And if they aren't, they're usually not believed, which is a problem. I agree. There are some women who do take advantage of this and they do exploit this. So what they'll do is they'll push boundaries, they'll behave in ways that are extremely inappropriate, and they might even get very violent and aggressive with a man because they know that he can't do anything. And there are videos, yeah, there's women fucking- Women knew that a man could retaliate in the same way that he would be able to if she were a man. Yeah, look at this. This is fucking crazy. Of course, there's fucking videos on Reddit from like public freakout that have like 10,000 upvotes because it's a woman getting punched in the face and every fucking Redditor goes, yeah, she deserved it. Look, women knew that a man watch. could retaliate. You are unironically proving my fucking point. Push, push, not even moved. If he pushed her with the same amount of force, she'd bounce off the fucking wall. This dude weighs like a hundred more pounds than her. What is wrong with you? Do you, so you want him to fight her right now? Is that what you want? Like you genuinely think she should get her fucking shit pushed in right now? Yeah, kill her, man. Yeah, snap her neck. Is that because I am a man and he is a man, we must fight to the death. No, he's saying the threat of violence keeps you civil, but women will act out and they'll be hysterical because they know we can't do anything as men. Like, what do you want that guy to do? Rip her in half like fucking God of War? Like, really? That's crazy. Yeah, she's also clearly drunk. If he bumped into her, she'd fucking get knocked out. And also, here, here. She's talking about women who are acting, they're acting like violent and acting, uh, uh, they're pushing, they're pushing boundaries because they know there's no retaliation. Jordan Peterson was using an example of a woman who is organizing a protest, not getting in his face, not even talking to him, organizing a protest. And Jordan Peterson, uh, Jordan Peterson said, I can't talk to her because, oh, what if she starts to fight me then i can't rip her open like god of war i can't fucking suplex her i can't fucking do my mortal combat finishing move violent and aggressive with a man because they know that he can't do anything if women knew that a man could retaliate in the same way that he would be able to if she were a man i promise you they wouldn't do half of the things that they do like what bro women don't fight men on the same rate men fight women that is not the case they fight less and if this like nuclear deterrent threat was there like what the fuck that would be crazy we can't live in gta world where if you like hit somebody it immediately turns to fucking combat mode the fucking skyrim music turns on no matter what like there needs to be context for these things and if someone hits you like the hit them right back immediately full force all gloves are off that's middle school shit that's like so immature and unadult like I've seen a video where this woman slapped a man and then hid behind another man <laughs>
So yeah. So oh, I saw a video. Okay, that means all women act like that. I've saw so many videos on Reddit. Your brain is poison. Go outside. There are some women who will take advantage of the fact that we have these double standards. So it's our yeah, like twelve women in the world will do that. Job as women to call out these women who do. She's ignoring the uh, the racial element of a black man not wanting to hit a white woman in this clip. Yeah, in America, dude. If that clip was America, bro. If that clip was in America, that lady calls the cops on a black dude for hitting her like that a big black dude he could get fucking killed and the cops would get away with it and she would too that is a huge fucking part of that situation but no men don't hit women men never hit women because they are really scared of what would happen 40 percent of cops beat their wives or at least been caught for it come on now fair for women to exploit these double standards to treat men in the most disgusting ways this is where failing intersectionality like, failing to understand intersectionality breaks your brain. Just like Nolan Void said in the chat, you cannot fuck with white women. <laughs> Especially as a black man. White women are the most fucking, like, they are the biggest recipients of affirmative action, for example. And they're the most, like, like, as a result of patriarchal structures, don't get me wrong. They are, like, the most protected in, like, a 911 call situation. It's basically saying that women are not threatened by men. Yes, which is absurd and be able to simply just get away with it because well what can the man do right because he can't really do anything about it so it's our job to kind of call it out that's what i understood from this no jordan peterson wanted to beat up a woman for organizing a protest at his event that's what it was that's literally what he said sorry he said i can't talk to her because she could do this like weird trick card that women have where they're just so unafraid jordan peterson said this woman's unafraid of men she could act in crazy ways so i don't want to talk to her bro she's unafraid of you because you are a skeleton with skin draped over it because you are a hollow from dark souls if that was a black woman being hit, the situation would be the same. It's about race, not gender. Yeah, kind of. I see what you mean. It would be more common for a woman to be hit in that situation. Race plays a huge factor. That's why I say if you don't understand intersectionality is like your brain is empty for the most part. I have privilege as a white woman and at the same time I'm terrified of retaliation in this kind of situation with any man. Yeah, your race and your sex and your gender identity and your, you know, like all of these like external features that we use to define like culture issues in America, they intersect and they have these fucking like parts where they fucking synergize to create more or less oppression in your life. And I think what he's saying is absolutely true. I think to pretend that women are incapable of doing any harm or doing anything wrong. No one says that. Who says that? Literally who? To criticize women when they do act this way. I Like who? She Like the whole point of this video is she's looking at TikToks that oversimplify Jordan Peterson because they hate him so much. But you love him so much that so you're gargling his balls to the point where you can't even get the fucking actual point he was saying across. And you are making up this fake reality that doesn't even exist do you think is nonsensical and in a way kind of sexist because you know it kind of implies that women are these soft delicate flowers and therefore can't do any wrong when i thought that we were trying to step women away from this assumption that we're soft and delicate and weak yeah feminism is when you can hit women thank you equal rights equal fights remember that remember when people would say that in like middle school yeah, she never she never grew up from that. It's pretty crazy. So the guy in the TikTok said that because of Jordan Peterson, there are men who don't understand why women aren't attracted to them. Jordan Peterson fills them up with all this misogyny and all these misogynistic views and then and then thrusts them back into the world and then these men don't know why they can't get a date or whatever and and all this kind of stuff but i find that very odd because i know for a fact that jordan peterson has actively said that rather than being like why how can i get the perfect woman or how can i get the perfect partner you should be asking yourself how can i make myself desirable enough for me to have the partner that i want the, this video strikes me as someone who just like because she said she uh is a huge joe rogan fan and only knows jordan peterson because she was researching tiktoks about joe rogan and, and like got fucking put down a right-wing pipeline on tiktok so like i think her perspective is like oh jordan peterson wrote the 12 rules rules for life and he does like really generic people magazine style self-help shit and like that's the shit she's defending but like she's also exposed to his like weird worldview and somehow is immediately defending that too it's really strange he also says clean your room and lives in a fucking pigsty and he's addicted to benzos yeah like this is all post benzo addiction post after he was fucking exposed for being a massive hypocrite i would say to young men who are irritated at women is if you're irritated at women you know, as a class of creature, there's something wrong with you because they're right. You're wrong. Bro, they're 
tell that to the clip we just watched where he said that I can't debate women because they're always trying to fight me. <laughs> Creature. To not pick you. If they're not picking you, it's because they're right. Based. Wow. Now, that might get... <laughs> I know that's a terrible thing to say, and I like. I think that's actually a very good point, but not because because Jordan Peterson is a smart guy, but because that's like extremely simple logic. You'd be more successful with women, <laughs> so you have you have to have that in your mind. And but he also the problem is he also says that high heels are a sex object and makeup is for sex. Like he doesn't understand women himself. He thinks being better is like understanding evolutionary evolutionary biology. I cannot be angry at women. It's stupid. Women? It's like that's it's like women being angry at men. <laughs> it's it's a sign of psychological trouble. Brain dead, dude. Like he he turned it so sideways so fast. Yeah, they have no reason to distrust men on a large scale. But what I do at least appreciate about this TikToker is that he at least gave us a reason for why he disliked Jordan Peterson, which is more than the other two that we've seen so far. You're clearly looking f for people who aren't making points. You're watching fucking six second TikToks that have like a typical SJW in them. All right, here's my take on Jordan Peterson as someone who's not super familiar with everything that he's done. Like, whatever, man. Don't make videos like this if you don't know what you're talking about. But like the fucking videos from earlier are fine because it's just like some random fucking person. Who was just like, man, I really don't like Jordan Peterson. It sucks that he's popular. Like, would you fucking pull up a tweet that had fucking six likes and be like, wow, no, no evidence. Shut up. So from what I've seen, a lot of males and young people in particular look up to him because he's fairly articulate and he has some points that are pretty helpful in terms of self-improvement. This sucks, So man. a large portion of his fan base looks up to him because he's fairly intelligent and he has some great self-improvement tips. So why does he get so much hate? It's because he also has some inflammatory opinions of his own that are outside of his main area of expertise. And because his voice is quite amplified, he's pretty influential in a lot of areas. This is the most neutral explanation you could possibly have. A lot of people are not going to agree with him, and they will attack him and his character because of those opinions. He also tends to lean conservative, and obviously liberals are not going to like a conservative's opinions. If you're a public figure of any sort, and you have strong opinions either way, you're going to get a lot of hate no matter what. And even if you don't have strong opinions, you can't just get hate because we're on the internet and there's a lot of hate to go around. You see, Frank. Oh, his name's Frank, by the way, guys. Guys, this is Frank. Say hi to Frank. I wish the internet had more of Frank, you know? I wish- What, more like stupid, uninformed centrists? More people who just speak like Wikipedia? The internet had more Franks. Frank was able to objectively look at Jordan Peterson, acknowledge the reasons why people like him, whilst also acknowledging the reasons why people dislike him in a very- ob Why do you need to be objective? What's the point? There's like no reason to be objective when you're talking about a man who is- constantly subjective someone asked his opinion thoughts on jordan peterson thoughts are not objective and he still gave you a wikipedia article and i agree with his analysis i think his analysis was very spot on i think that's probably the most how do you agree there's nothing to agree with he just said the. he just said a fucking very surface level summary i agree he didn't even provide analysis your reason i guess as to why people dislike jordan peterson personally i feel like frank hit the nail on the head i don't think i can add any more to his to his analysis all right i, I get it passionate man i think he's a very intelligent great mind and i think no. that he's very much needed in a time where he's, he's an ego egomaniacal benzo addicted fucking idiot why did school brainwash it, us to think you always have to have an equal amount of pros and pros and cons about an issue otherwise you're biased which is apparently a horrible thing to be yeah i mean everyone is biased she's obviously biased jordan peterson is also biased towards his demographic of straight white men i'm biased Everyone is biased. It's just a matter of whether or not facts and statistics support your biases or not. That determines your credibility. And facts and statistics support my biases and not Xena's. People are struggling with things like finding meaning and people are developing these uh, external... If you are struggling with finding meaning and you get it from Jordan Peterson, I promise you that Jesus is not much better, but he's better. Go to God. <laughs> The importance of self-responsibility and taking control of your life and you know his analogy of like clean your room guys you are the main character you are an individual and collectivism doesn't work you're an individual and systemic uh systemic oppression doesn't exist you just made all the wrong choices and your parents made the wrong choices and their parents made the wrong choices 
And now, uh, if anything's wrong, you can just fix it with one or two choices. It was basically the idea that you need to fix your own life first. Make sure your life is in good order. Make sure your life is the way you want it to be. Make sure your life is optimum. Do you have a good relationship with your family? Do you have a good relationship with your friends? Are you happy and content within your romantic life? Are you happy and content within your job, in your career, in your home? So, uh, not really selling me on Jordan Peterson. He seems pretty uh, like you can get this kind of advice from a magazine at the at the Safeway. You know, when you're checking out at the grocery store and there's a magazine that's like, top five tips for a spicier sex life. Top five organizations organizational tips you know what i mean i think you can get about as much from that as you can get from jordan peterson and at least they're not going to say that uh, women wear makeup because uh it makes them look like uh, sexually aroused and then i don't know what the rules are i don't know what the rules are about sexual interactions in the workplace why does everyone think i'm weird are those things in order because if they're not in order <sighs> then what place do you have to judge and criticize the world when your own home is a mess you know What place do you have to judge and criticize the world when your own home is a mess? That is a fantastic question. I also have a theory that the reason why Jordan Peterson is extra popular among young men is because we have a, unfortunately, a generation of men growing up without dads. And so there are a lot of young men who I think are seeking... Uh, for white people, the peak year for children not living in two-parent homes out of a percentage of all children was 2006. That was the peak year, 2006. These numbers have not changed very much since the 90s. The peak year was 1996 for Hispanic people and 1994 for black people. Weirdly, the black number is much, much higher. Specifically, got higher after uh, Ronald Reagan was president and Richard Nixon before him. Kind of interesting, but I'm sure that has nothing to do with anything, right? It's just individual choices, sure. Why is it all of a sudden a problem it hasn't gotten any worse over time. A generation of men growing up without dads. A generation of men growing up without dads? What about 2006? What about the millennials? Millennials are the generation growing up without dads, and they're in their fucking 30s now. For white people, anyway. Let's see, what generation was, was a child in 1995? Gen X. Gen X for black people and Hispanic people. So that's not the generation you're talking about. You're talking about Gen Z. And so there are a lot of young men who I think are seeking out this kind of like father figure person. I think that's true. I just don't think it has anything to do with uh, single parent household rates in America. Uh, maybe she could be talking about Britain. I don't fucking know. But and certainly not a problem in America where the majority of Jordan Peterson's demographic is. So in a way, I feel like Jordan Peterson has kind of become a lot of people's digital dad. It's true. It's really parasocial. I sometimes wonder the same thing about Andrew Tate. I feel like Andrew Tate has become people's like digital older brother. We have a lot of men. Is she an Andrew Tate defender? That's crazy. Who are really lacking in terms of male role models in their own personal lives. These digital um, male role models have become very appealing for that reason. Nah, it's because they make them feel good. It's because they validate insecurities for money on purpose. For young men, it's a bigger deal for them because at least women have female empowerment <laughs> and, you know, like feminism and stuff. Feminism is destroying men. It's destroying men, guys. <laughs> oh, no. Female empowerment means men are beaten down. Yeah, respecting women and giving them uh, more opportunities uh, than they had before, which is still not as much as men have now, is ruining men. Women have something to motivate them and to inspire them to go out and do all these things, whereas men don't. Yeah, men don't have that. That's a crazy thing to think. That's just like, no, you're just wrong don't really have anything like that and if you also don't have a father figure to inspire you and to be your role model then i think that kind of makes you yearn for that but anyways i really hope you enjoyed this video let me know in the comments what your personal views are on jordan peterson this video fucking sucks man it's like really bad